Okay, even though uh, <laughs> it looks like we got 13 people, uh, which they're not showing up on mine, but hopefully they are there. Uh, good morning, everybody. We asked Jensen Uyeda, one of the extension agents on Oahu Island to come talk about avocado lace bug. Uh, Jensen is an agent that I know, and Jensen's somebody that they always tell us, uh, be like Jensen. He's one of the agents they, they tell us to be like. So Jensen's really great. Um, he's, he's the agent that's primarily focused on avocado lace bug. And I thought this was interesting and an important topic to talk about. Myself and Laura and some others said, we want to try to start doing talks that are going to help us at Helpline. Um, try to figure out a little bit more of some of the problems that we're, that we're getting the most questions about. So I don't want to wax on too much. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Jensen, and let me make sure I can share the screen or you can share the screen there. Sure, thank you. Yeah. And um, how, how we'll do it, how we'll do it, folks. Sorry, Jensen, <laughs> one more housekeeping. Um, just stay muted ask questions through the chat folks. And then if Jensen ever says, do you have questions? You can either chat them or uh, turn on your mic and ask. Thanks, sorry for interrupting Jensen. No problem. Thanks for the introduction uh, and swelling up my head a little bit. Um, yeah, I've been the extension agent on Oahu for about 10 years now, uh, working with edible crops from vegetables to fruit trees. Um, I started working with avocado lace bug about a year ago. Um, I was getting also getting a lot of questions probably what you would be getting at the helpline um, people were wondering what's going on in my trees all my leaves are falling all my fruit is falling um, and I kept asking department of ag for a little bit of help on what we could do about it and didn't seem to get much response um, back then so I took it upon myself to figure out strategies to help uh, my commercial farms as well as uh, home gardeners deal with uh, the pressures of avocado lace bug and uh, pull up a presentation real quick. So um, avocado lace bug is a pretty detrimental pest on avocados. Uh, I think the first sighting or reporting was in 2019 on Oahu at the Urban Garden Center. Uh, I believe it was also found on the Big Island during that period as well. And basically it's a sap sucking insect. Uh, on the right, you can see uh, a, kind of a close up of a leaf, what it might look like the infestation. Um, typically you'll see a chlorotic leaf spot and which progresses into a brown necrotic tissue. And then that typically starts from the center of the leaf and then radiates out. And typically when you look on the other side of these leaves, you'll see um, the image at the bottom, right? Um, you'll see the, uh, the adults, which will have their wings. And then you'll see the nymphs. Um, these, is, these are basically the same, but they don't have wings. You'll see eggs, and then you'll see the excrement, which are these little black dots on the, on the leaf. Typically their life cycles, uh, three weeks, uh, but can be shorter or longer depending on time of year, um, climatic conditions and your location. But generally it's about three week life cycles. Um, so in Hawaii, we can have multiple generations a year. So they're continuously going over and over again, reproducing. Um, and because of that rate of reproduction, you can have a infestation, infestation in your tree, in your orchard real quickly um, if unmanaged. Uh, typically, the eggs are laid in loose rows and then covered with a tar-like secretion. Um, for the most part, you'll see a lot of the colonization along the, the ribs of the leaf. Um, and then you'll see them walking around kind of in the middle between the two, two veins. Uh, some additional pictures of the, the infestation. And then, uh, so what we were trying to do was figure out uh, strategies to help manage the, the lace bug. And uh, a lot of the work we did was based off of the University of California's uh, UC Davis in California and the work they've done to manage the, 
the lace bug there. And from the research that we looked at from what they've done, it seemed like there was no effective file controls um, that they've identified yet. Um, there are some bio controls which include lace, uh, lace wings and a few thrips, mites, um, and I believe some fungal pathogens that can predate on the, the lace bug itself. So because of that, we decided to go the chemical route and try and identify uh, products that were effective against um, the lace bug. So what we did originally was we have an orchard on our research station on Oahu. Uh, we kind of developed a rating scale of what a healthy plant might be. So this image here is a, uh, a healthy plant. We would call it on the scale, it would be equivalent to one. Um, this would have no damage, no insects walking around, um, and an overall healthy plant. <clears throat> and then we go through the scale as the plant starts to get more and more infested. Um, we'll give it a higher rating scale. So this would be equivalent to two. Um, there may be like a few leaves per branch that are starting to uh, become infested. And then as you go down the scale, this would be like a 20% uh, infestation, uh, more like a 50%. And then this is a pretty much almost every leaf has been um, colonized by the avocado lace bug. So um, we use this scale to monitor monitor our efficacy of the uh, products being used. And we use this to kind of determine whether or not the products we were using were effective or not. So um, the objective of that was to basically evaluate whatever was um, known to be effective on the avocado lace bug and also products that are currently available in Hawaii for use on avocado were selected to try and control these um, insects chemically. Uh, we looked at both organic and conventional products um, to have a broad spectrum of products that both organic growers um, and conventional growers could use in their rotation to make sure that they can control the, the pest all year long. Um, so we conducted a initial trial in 2021, early 2021. Um, these products you see in this chart here were selected as the products we wanted to evaluate. Um, either the, in the literature they said to be effective or based on what we've seen them do on other insects, we thought that they would be effective as well on this particular um, insect. Uh, on the chart, you can see that the products with the asterisk um, are organically approved for use. And then uh, the there's one product here, which is the Mustang, which is a restricted use pesticide. So all these are, are commercial agricultural products, but uh, there are homeowner or residential equivalents, I would say, to these products in the red. So Admire Pro is a commercial Bayer product, but Bayer has a product called, uh, one of their Bayer Advanced product, I think it's called Citrus and fruit tree or something like that. There's a citrus on the, on the label. It's a imidacloprid product, uh, which you see here uh, as the active ingredient. And it is labeled for use on avocado in the home garden. Um, I believe malathion is still available for home use. I'm not exactly sure if you can find it, uh, but um, that's another product that might be available. Moltex is an azadiraptin product, which is typically available. Uh, it's a synthetic neem product and it's typically available for home garden use. Uh, Ampede is a commercial insecticidal soap. Um, I know for a fact you can get insecticidal soaps at uh, home garden shops. And then Pyganic is a pyrethroid, an organic pyrethrin. And I believe you can still get pyrethrins uh, for home garden use. And that would be the equivalent to this commercial Pyganic. Um, the rest, I don't think there's an equivalent for the home garden use. Um, but it is available locally in Hawaii. Uh, for our trial, what we used uh, was a backpack mist floor because the avocado trees are typically anywhere from 10 to 20 feet tall. Uh, some are larger. Uh, we needed a, a spray equipment that could get uh, good coverage and uh, good coverage all the way up through the canopy. And the mist floor, a backpack mist floor seemed to be one of the best uh, mechanisms to do that a, on a small scale. 
Um, it's probably not likely that somebody with one tree is going to buy a thousand dollar sprayer just to spray their avocado. So um, from a home garden standpoint, it may not be practical to get a mist blower, but if they have a leaf blower in their, uh, in their garage, they could typically turn that leaf blower into a backpack mist blower real easily. And that's another topic that if you want it, I can come back and show you how to build one of those. But the backpack mist blower is one of the most effective spray tools to um, spray fruit trees in general. And then typically we include a surfactant. In this case, we use Kinetic, which is an organic surfactant to try and help spread the product to make sure we get better coverage across the leaf surface. Um, and then what we did was we were spraying them about every two weeks um, and then trying to see the efficacy. So we did this for a, a period of about two months to try and see uh, whether or not these particular products were effective against managing the avocado lace bug. So this chart um, here kind of shows uh, we started at an original scale. So the trees are already um, infested with the the avocado lace bug. So what we did here was try and see whether or not with that original uh, scale, if we could bring the, the population or the, the damage down. So the products that seemed to work the best in our trial were Admire Pro, um, Ecotech, which was that yellow line, um, Pyganic, which was this, this blue, dark blue line. And then uh, right, blank. Malafine was the other one with Mustang. So the pyrethroids and the um, Admire seemed to be the best products within our trial. Um, and then we did, we also evaluated those products for um, number of dead. So because once the leaf, it's, it's really hard to evaluate efficacy based on that leaf scale, because once the leaf is damaged, um, the, the leaf won't recover from that damage, right? Once it's dead, it's dead. So um, we also did evaluations on number of insects that were dead after treatment. So that's what this graph is showing um, in comparison to the previous graph, which was just the overall um, visual quality of the tree. Um, and it's for the same thing, you'll get pretty good control with, uh, it was the Admire Pro, which is this blue line here. Uh, Malafine, which is also this lighter blue color. You start to lose uh, efficacy after a little bit. Um, Pyganic, which is this darker blue line, seemed to be pretty good. So for the most part, uh, a lot of these products were pretty good up to 80%. Uh, at killing the pest. Uh, some of these lower ones, like I think this is Entrust, wasn't so good, which is a Spinocid product. Uh, I think this was Molt X, which is this lower line, then it starts to in improve. So um, I think a lot of these products are effective at certain times in the growth cycle of the pest. So you want to, if it's a, a systemic product like Admire, where the, the chemical goes into the plant and as the insect will suck out or feed on the leaf, it'll ingest the pesticide and then eventually die versus some of these other products like the Multex, um, insectocidal soaps, they have to actually contact the insect. So if you don't have adults walking around um, and then you won't be able, those products won't be effective if they're in the egg stage versus the adult stage. Does that make sense? Um, and then, uh, because the life cycle is so short with the three week life cycle, um, it's important to have a good spray program where um, if the infestation is high, you wanna go at maybe a two week interval because um, that way you get a chance to kill the original adults and then whatever comes out of the eggs following that, you're gonna wipe them out as well. Um, if you go to a one month interval, 
you may give time for those eggs to then become adults and they lay new eggs. So you kind of want to just break that adult cycle so that they can't go into the next stage and lay uh, and lay basically. Uh, this, this is just another representation of uh, the efficacy of the product. So a uh, little bit easier to see the results in this chart where A represents a really good product. And then the, the letters just determine a statistical differences between each treatment. So um, basically the letters that have, or the bars that have A were pretty good at controlling the product, uh, the pest, whereas the lower letters or higher letters are um, less effective. And then C being the control. So C is the, the trees that were untreated had uh, maybe a few deaths on that particular tree. So uh, like I said, that Admire Pro or Imidacloprid, um, Ecotech, which is a rosemary oil type of insecticide. Uh, Mustang is a synthetic pyrethroid equivalent to that uh, organic pyrethroid. Um, and then Sivanto Pro is another product that commercially available, but you, I don't think there's an equivalent for um, home garden use. And then everything else was kind of moderately effective against um, the lace bug. And then this chart is just kind of showing um, because insecticides have only so many applications typically per, uh, per year for avocados, uh, we tried to create a spray program where we could rotate some of these chemicals. And what we did was we used the products that were moderately effective or really effective and put them in a rotation program so that uh, they would receive different chemicals every month, basically. And from this chart, you can see that the or organic rotation that we put together was not much different from any of the untreated trees. And this could be because we were going at a month one month rotation on the spray program uh, versus a two week rotation. Um, and then you see this dark line at the bottom is our chemical control using those uh, five products that seem to be really effective. And then there's other products out there now that uh, we're looking into. So this is a um, nanotech or nanoparticle technology that's, I guess, new to pesticide use. Um, this one is called Pure Crop One. It's a soybean oil-based product. And basically it's supposed to um, get into the gut of the, uh, the insect and disrupt uh, the cellular wall and disrupt their en enzyme practices. So. Uh, we're looking into this product now into the rotation and it's not a, it's an exempt product. So I believe you could use this in a home garden use as well as uh, the other product Ecotech because it's not typically labeled for only agricultural use. The only challenge is it's a two and a half gallon jug. So if you have one tree, that product is probably gonna last you a lifetime. Um, so you would have to find a way to share that product basically with other people. So it doesn't, it's not necessarily practical. Um, I'm not sure if they sell them in smaller quantities, but uh, those products are available for home garden use. Um, and then because we know what some of these products can do, um, we're also looking into a different route of management strategies, I guess, for uh, our commercial growers, at least. And one of those is to look at um, the variety impact on susceptibility to damage. So um, in our collection, we have about 30 different varieties and each tree exhibits a different level of infestation. So uh, I think in the future, I hope to put together a pretty comprehensive uh, evaluation, I guess, of the varieties across the state and how susceptible they are to uh, the lace bug. And then that data can be used for 
future recommendations on what trees might be able to produce without having to be sprayed every two weeks. Um, from a commercial standpoint, pesticide application is expensive and not has not typically been done uh, normally for avocado production. Uh, but because of this lace bug, it's it's something that's needed or else you could potentially lose everything um, after fruit set. So that hopefully that's coming about. And I think working with um, you folks as well to kind of see what observations you're seeing out from your trees, as well as the people calling in, like understanding what varieties are um, getting hit the hardest, I think uh, would be important in the future. And then just to kind of summarize everything, uh, when you're talking to growers or when you're using these products yourself, um, you wanna make sure that everybody's following the labeled rates, uh, the PHIs, the REIs to make sure that um, everybody's staying safe with the pesticide use. Um, a lot of these products can be harmful to bees. So understanding when you can use the product, um, especially during flowering when uh, something like Admire shouldn't be used because it's a systemic product. It has potential to get into the flower and um, affect bee activity. And then stuff like the softer products uh, like Impede, Microtrol, Multex, Pygani, Ecotech. Um, they only provide a temporary control uh, when the infestation is low. And you want to make sure you're using those at the right stages. So you want to make sure you're getting the adult stages or the nymph stages when they're actually walking around because um, it may not be effective on the egg stages. Um, and then products like Aminocoprid and Malathion are very effective. Um, and I believe the home garden label allows for a soil drench. So you don't have to spray it onto the tree. You can basically just drench it into the soil where the tree is and the tree will naturally uptake that immunocooperate and then become uh, effective against keeping the uh, lace bug off the plant. And then if you're using broad spectrum insecticides like the soap, the pyrethroids especially, um, making sure you're uh, being cognizant of the, the other beneficial insects because they don't, because they're broad spectrum, um, they'll kill everything they contact. So you wanna make sure you're being cognizant of that. Um, and then, like I said, there are uh, natural enemies for the lace bug. It's just the, the data that I've seen so far shows that they're ineffective or not 100% effective. And uh, some of them we may not have here in Hawaii yet, uh, as far as natural enemies. Um, but that's the formal, I guess, the formal presentation for that. Cool. Uh, wow, you guys have done a lot of work. It's it's definitely a lot of work to to spray. Uh, yeah. Especially when I'm spraying individual trees, I have to mix for each tree and then spray each tree individually to make yeah. sure each tree is getting the right amount of product so where's trees oh, yeah was where was that um where is the plot with the avos is that pearl city no no this is at pomoho oh, okay have yeah, you noticed have anything in terms of elevation and reduction in uh in lace bug damage or populations uh, so they pretty much at every opinion, elevation avocados can grow. We're at about 700 feet elevation. Yeah. yeah. Um, the damage is pretty heavy. Yeah. Um, I've seen trees in Wahiwa and Mililani, which is about 1,000 to 1,200 feet elevation, uh. um, which has a heavy infestation. Uh, I haven't seen trees, uh, like say in Kona, up mm -hmm. at maybe. 2,000, 3,000 feet elevation. Um, I haven't seen the damage, but I did have a conference uh, presentation with the Avocado Association on the Big Island, and it seems like they're struggling yeah, um, yeah. up in uh, Upper Kona. So Yeah, I was specifically maybe, thinking of like Kona and the upper areas yeah. of Kohala and maybe yeah. even like above in Ka'u, not Lehu, some of those farm lots, but it seems like you can get it. Because what's the highest elevation you can grow avos? um like about two thousand feet 
No, I think you can go higher than that. Because I think Upper Kula, there's mango production. And that's three to 4,000, I think. Hmm. You said mango production. Hmm. Sorry, avocado. Yeah. Um, okay, so we got a couple questions. First off, people want to yeah. want to see the uh, blower, the blower construction. So maybe, <laughs> you know, in the future, we'll, we'll ask you to show us how to do that because that's pretty cool. Um, do you want to go back to the first slide with the products and give the yeah. master gardeners the top two products for non-organic versus organic? I think we should make that. Is it still sharing? Yeah. Yeah, you're sharing. Okay. Um, so in my opinion, for conventional, the top two products that master gardeners can have access to would be the Emido Cooperate, which is this first product, Admire Pro. Um, in a home garden shop, it won't be called Admire Pro. It'd be called, I'm pretty sure it's Bear Home Defense or Bear Advance. Yeah. Um, it, it comes in a blue bottle and a, I think it's a quart, quart size. Um, that would be the equivalent for that one. And then um, the Malanthion would be the next one if you can find that. Um, organically, uh, I think the Pyganic was probably the top one. Um, I'm not sure if you can find that equivalent in a home, home garden product. Um, I think there's like Pyranol, but I don't know if Pyranol is an Omri approved product. Um, and then stuff like the Impede, Multex, um, and then this Ecotech product, you might be able to use it because it's a EPA exempt product. There's no specification for ag use only or home garden use only. Um, they don't have 100% kill, but we were seeing up to that 80% kill. So I think the products are relatively effective. You just have to go at a more frequent application rate or frequency than um, the conventional product because of that. Um, contact insecticide with no residual effect, you're going to have to spray it every two weeks at least to kind of make sure you catch the current adults and then whatever adults that were there that laid eggs, you have to catch the eggs after they've hatched basically so that you can kind of prevent that next generation from becoming adults and laying eggs. That's kind of the strategy I think that we're, we're pushing forward. So it's at, at least a two week interval for the contact insecticides because you don't have any residual contact. Um, I think the product like Admire, we were seeing control all the way out to one month um, for foliar application. Uh, I think that the research from UC Davis showed that if you soil drench it, you'll get control out to 17 weeks. Um, but we wanted to just show immediate control with that uh, the foliar stuff because it takes a little bit of time for that plant to uptake the admire. I don't know exactly at what point it becomes effective and then lasts out to the 17 weeks. Um, and I think a harvest interval for admire is 25 days for a soil drenched product. And I think it's a week for a foliar applied product where EPA and FDA say that the product is no longer inside the plant and there's no residual i guess for that one for the systemics interesting um so you know over on big island we see people come in say say the avocado the lace bug comes in hits their trees defoliate mm -hmm. and then it's just a cycle what do you yeah. think the future is for trees in homeowners yards are are they just going to be in decline consistently do you think it's going to kill the trees eventually have you seen any any long-term effects of the cyclical pattern of the boom and bust? <clears throat> so far, no, uh, I haven't seen that. Anything like dying, severely dying from, or dying because of severe damage. We have a tree at Pomoho that every flush, the trees, the leaves are gone one month after the flush. They're just so damaged. It's a variety I would not recommend. I don't know the name of it because the, la the label has been lost, but whatever that tree is, it it defoliates almost immediately because the, the presence of the, the lace bug is so heavy immediately after the new flush. So um, those ones will go down real quickly. But I mean, we have a variety called San Miguel, which 
we don't spray at all. It only gets, it's literally next to that tree that defoliates mm -hmm. and it'll maybe get us, uh, based on the scale, it may get up to a three, but that's as bad as it'll get without okay. having to spray. So, um, okay. So that it's answers very, our, our second question, which it sounds like we need to get San Miguel somehow. I need to come get cuttings. <laughs> maybe maybe yeah. I can ask you to get cuttings and we can start growing. So yeah, definitely. Gardener Greenhouse and we can advertise them as lace bug resistant or something like that. Get your stamp of approval. Tolerant, lace bug tolerant. Tolerant, uh, tolerant. So I, the strategy is not having to have to spray all the time, Yeah, but it's, it's, probably best if you do you focus your spray application during the period after flowering so uh after flowering i take that back at and after flowering because typically what happens is you get that flush of growth after fruit set and those leaves i guess have to not after the, the flush i guess prior to fruit set right mm -hmm. um and then whatever leaves are on the tree after fruit set, you want to keep them on the tree as long as possible because typically what happens is after you get that fruit set, the leaves start to defoliate. And as the leaves defoliate, that's when you start losing the fruit because sure. it's basically just aborting the fruit because it doesn't have enough leaf energy to support it, right? It naturally knows uh, I'm dying. I need to drop my fruit because oh. I can't support them. So oh. I think if you focus your spray application during that period, you can maintain whatever fruit set you do have mm. for that season. And that's at the minimum, that's what I would say um, to try and maintain. Um, if you can do it all year long, you're probably going to have better harvests, a better fruit set because all that built up energy during that off season, right, is uh, lost if you're not managing the, the pressure during that off season. Uh, but yeah, I think that's, in kind of the, the minimum strategy is to just keep the leaves on as long as possible during that that fruit ripen uh, fruit, fruit maturation period. Mm -hmm. Um, so it sounds like you're going to do some work in the future with with varieties and and tolerance or resistance, and there might be publication in the future on that or some some extra that's, work. That's the hope. Uh, That'll be interesting. At, at least a list of. Uh, moderately tolerant to susceptible and as i don't think anything is resistant i think they're just they're just trees that don't uh be fully as heavy uh some of the the one of the webinars that uc davis put on their ipm program put on said that i think there is genetic variability within the population of lace bug mm. and each set of genetics are specific to certain varieties, like they prefer certain varieties. So I think that's what HDA is doing now is they're- oh, um, which they're, late bugs we have. They're doing the genetic work to see if they're all one um, species, I guess, or subspecies or whatever, uh, or do we have multiple genetic material that, um, then that way we can kind of see, okay, we have one population, they only like these trees, um, Currently, we can recommend growing everything else because they're they're more tolerant and more commercially viable. I think with without having to spray. Cool, but yeah, I, I don't know where that research is. Uh, that's above my abilities. Sure, I'm yeah. I'm just focusing on keeping things alive for now. Yeah, yeah. But to answer your original question, I haven't seen any trees die yet from that's severe cool. damage. Um, that one tree does die. It. Mm -hmm it'll probably be the first to die. Okay, cool. Never any leaves on it for more than a month. That'll be, that'll be the indicator. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's pure crop one seems like it. Little. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, we're dealing, we're dealing with a little bit of pure crop one over here too. It seems like an interesting product, yeah. like kind of when the, when the salesman came around, it was kind of sounded like a snake oil pitch, but uh, yeah, it's it, one of my growers who does hearts of palm, used it after trying a bunch of different stuff that we had recommended mm -hmm. and the pure crop one was what took care of his mite and mold problem on his yeah. on his heart of palm so i'm i'm looking forward to trialing the pure crop one a little bit more mm -hmm. especially because it's um it's labeled organic yep it's an omni approved product that's really it's going to be pretty cool mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I think you can use it as a surfactant too. So if you have other oh. products, you can mix those two. Cool. Uh, and it's like a, a natural surfactant because of that soybean oil, I think. Oh, yeah. Um, helps with the penetration. Mm. I think that's what it is. It, I think it's a methylated seed oil product. So that methylation, methylated seed oil is what breaks that surface tension on the leaf and allows oh. for stomatal penetration, if oh. I understand correctly. It's, well, it's yeah, and I thought the whole idea with like the nanotechnology was that it can, it, it's, it's more the fact that they're so small, they can penetrate yeah. even between yeah. hydrophilic and hydrophobic yeah. um, layers. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see how well it works. Uh, any other questions? So, I might, you might want to suggest too, when you're working with collars is like tree maintenance is a very important uh making sure their, their pruning practices are there. So one, the tree is, is healthy. It's pushing out new leaves. Um, and then the second one would be, it's easier to maintain chemically if the tree uh, is a little bit shorter, a little bit smaller, yeah. um, and it's not a hundred feet tall. Uh, yeah, we've been trying to talk, to talk homeowners into, into growing smaller so that they can, yeah. treat. but that's because I wasn't, uh, familiar with this backpack mist blower. So this is going to be something that we can also start to recommend. There's some homeowners who really love their trees and would probably sp spend a grand on yeah. a backpack sprayer. <laughs> I mean, if you're, if you guys are doing in-person things, I'm, I know the equipment is there in Sharon's office. I'll be happy to fly up and do a demo. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. If you, if you guys want, uh, I'm more than happy to, to do that and I can cover my my travel costs if you want to do that okay great yeah we'll talk with the master gardeners and and the board and see what they what they want to do and um and we'll definitely probably take you up on that offer yeah uh any more questions on the anyone else um so yeah the the recording for for your information deborah will be up as soon as possible possibly we'll work on it today uh, if we don't have too many questions at the helpline. Um, and then other than that, thanks so much, Jensen. I'll probably be in touch with you to try to uh, get some get some uh, uh, scion of okay. that San Miguel, because I'm not sure if we have it over here readily, but we'll have, okay. to probably, we'll have to probably get some rootstock started first, because that would be a fun thing for us to grow over here. Yeah. Everyone says Definitely. thank you. You're getting thank you <laughs> in the chats. Yeah, I see them. Thanks. Yeah. Thank and you guys for having me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we appreciate it. Uh, have a good weekend, Jensen. You too. Have a good weekend, the rest of y'all too. Take see care. You guys.